Welcome to Know Your Nodes, where we pick an individual node in Godot and talk about how it's used. This time we're looking at Godot 3.0's Particles 2D node, which you can use to make all sorts of particle-based visual effects. On the screen are a few examples that we'll be looking at later in the video. Now, if you're new to Godot, hopefully this will help you get started with particles, and if you're familiar with Godot 2.1, you're going to see that things are working quite a bit differently in 3.0. All right, let's get started. So we're starting with this torch image. It's just a sprite, and we've added a Particles 2D node to it. And the first thing you'll notice is you get a warning, and that warning is telling you that a material needs to be assigned. And so we're going to do that. Go to Process Material. And you have two choices here. You can use a shader material, which means you're going to write shader code to handle the to handle the particles or you can use a particles material and that's what we're actually going to use and now you can see actually we have some basic white square particles being generated and they're falling down from the spot so what do we want to do well one thing we want to do is move this so that we're going to want it to look like it's coming from inside the torch, not outside it. So we're going to center that over that. And in the visibility section, we're going to check show behind parent because I want the particles to look like they're coming from inside the torch, not on top of it. Okay, we're emitting. We're going to take the time and I'm going to increase that to two seconds on the lifetime. And I think we are done there. So now we need to go into this particles material. And this is where all of your crazy number of settings are for all the different things you can have your particles do. And we're going to change a few things here, starting with gravity. I want these things to be going upwards, not downwards. And so I could go in and I could change the gravity, which right now is set to positive in the y direction. But I'm going to set that to zero. because so we're going to do this a little bit differently than the gravity is going to make these moves. So we're going to turn that off. Now we want to look at the emission shape here. The emission shape is where the particles initially spawn. And by default it's set to point, so they're all going to spawn at the same point. But we're going to spread that out and we're going to use a box. And in here we're going to set what the extents of the box are going to be. And so we want to spread them out a little bit in X. Remember, this is extents, so it's 5 in either direction, so it'll be a total of 10 in width. And then the Y, we're going to do about 18. So now these guys are spawning in all sorts of little places inside this box. Okay, but our initial velocity, which is right here, is very small. So if we were to increase that a bit, Let's try 25. You're going to see that they're all flying out to the right, but sort of spread out. And part of that is because spread is set to 45 degrees. So let's make that zero. And now they're going to be going in a straight line from wherever they spawn. But they're going to the right. And initial velocity is just a scalar value. We can't set a direction. So the way you have to solve that is back on your particles 2D you want to rotate it. So let's rotate that minus 90 degrees. Now they're spawning and going upwards. So let's increase that velocity to 50. Fire should be fairly quick. And then we're going to talk about scale. This is the size that you want the particles to be. So if we increase that to say 25, we get much bigger colored squares for our particles. But you can also use a scale curve to change the scale of the particle over its lifetime. So if we click New Curve Texture and then click on that new curve we've made, we get a new panel opened up here at the bottom where we can alter this. So let's say we wanted to start at around there and then scale down to say just under halfway. So this goes between 0 and 1. It's a multiplier to that scale property you have. Back to properties, we can look at the angle. This is what angle they'll be rotated at. We're going to make that 45, so they're more like diamond shapes instead of squares. 
and then we're going to talk about speeding these things up. So they're, they're starting out at a certain speed, but we want them to sort of accelerate as they're going upwards. And we can do that with the linear acceleration. So that's going to accelerate in whatever direction we're going. So if we make that about 25, you'll see now we are accelerating upward as we go, and you can see them moving upward. That's good. And let's go back to the Particles 2D properties. Right now we're only spawning eight of these. That's not very many. So we're going to take that and make that a much bigger number. And now we need to talk about color. Just like we can change the scale over the course of the lifetime, we can also change the color. Go down to color here, and we're going to add a color ramp, which is a new gradient texture. You click on that, and we want a new gradient. The gradients start out from black to white, but we don't want that. We want the initial color to actually be a, a bright white, like it's super hot right at the beginning. And then we want to end up at the end somewhere in the red. And we're also going to drop the alpha a bit, so it, like it's fading out. And then in the middle, we're going to add some orange. So it passes through from white to orange to red as it goes. So already looking much more fire-like. Now another thing we can do is look at the angular velocity. And that's going to give it some rotation. And we're going to make that about 350. So you see them all spinning now, right? So they have an angular velocity of 360. But that's not as good when they're all going the same. So if we add in some randomness here, we can put a one in here and that'll randomize them in different directions. So they're all spinning independently. And that's getting us pretty close to the sample I showed you at the beginning. The only thing that I had done differently was if you go back to Particles 2D, there is a speed scale. And if you double that, it'll just do everything twice as fast. And there we have it, a little flame from our torch. Here's the original one that I made beforehand. Pretty close to the same. You can see there's all sorts of little tweaking you can do to get everything just the way you want it. And that's part of the fun of messing around with particles is, is you know, endlessly twiddling all these little knobs and getting them to do, to do different things for you. But that was the main example I wanted to show you. Now let's look at some other examples of some different kinds of effects you can get from particles. Here's another example. This is almost the same setup, almost exactly the same particle material settings with the scale and the color ramp going to a low alpha so it looks like it's fading out. The reason it looks so realistically like smoke is that we're using a texture this time. And so over here on the Particles 2D, you can set a texture, and we're using this white spoke puff uh, on there. And you can see it looks pretty good. It looks like smoke coming out, and we can even put it to see what it looks like in a scene. There we attach it to the little house sprite, and it looks like you've got smoke coming out of the chimney. Uh, something that you normally do with something like this is if you look at the house, uh, we took the smoke and made it a child, like this. And then in the visibility section, check the show behind parent. That way it looks like it's coming out of the chimney instead of on top of it. But that gives you a pretty good effect. And there you see it in context of a scene pretty good. Now another thing you can do with something like this smoke is attach it to a moving object. So here's a train sprite and we've attached the smoke, the same smoke 
particles to the smokestack. But the problem is when you move the train, that smoke stays right there with the train, and that's not going to look natural when the train moves. So what you want to do is, in the particle settings, you go down here to drawing, and there's a checkbox, by default it's on, called local coordinates. And that means the particles stay attached to the local coordinates of their parent. Now if you uncheck that, they become global coordinates. And that means that when you move the sprite, the ones that have already been emitted are not affected by that movement. Right, they just come out wherever they are. And that means that by adjusting some of the settings with speed and things like that, we can get this result. And actually, in a running scene with the train moving, you'll see it looks pretty good, leaving the trail behind it as it goes. And you could add in some more stuff to make it look more like it's chug-chugging and there's little gaps in the in the flow and all that kind of stuff. And um, this acceleration, this is the radial acceleration, but we're also doing some tangential acceleration in the you know perpendicular direction of movement so that it streams out behind. And you can increase or decrease that based on what your speed of your sprite is. I'm going to go through a couple other examples. So here we have a chest which is just an area 2D that has a collision shape on it so that we can uh, detect clicks. And you're going to click on this to collect coins. And I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll talk about how this is done. So there's our chest. When we click on it, we get the little shower of coins that comes up from it and each time we each time we do it. And so what we're doing there is we have our coin emitter and it's set to one shot. One shot means it's only going to happen once. When you turn it to emitting, the amount of particles is 10. When those 10 particles have, have done, it doesn't happen again. Right. If we uncheck one shot, that would be a constant stream. And the reason there's that gap there is because we're using explosiveness. Explosiveness is how many of those 10 to emit at once. Right. For example, if I put one on there, all 10 are emitted at once. The default value is zero, which means you get the steady stream. So we wanted to just have a little burst of them, and we wanted it to be one shot. And then if you notice the animation of the coins, the animation of the coins is accomplished by the texture. The coin texture looks like this. So this is a series of animation frames of the rotating coin and we set that as our texture and then we set the H frames to 8 because there are 8 frames to this animation. And then to make that work in the particle material, there is an animation section where you can set the speed and tweak it in all sorts of ways to make it run the way you want. For a little bit more involved example of this, I have this animation of a slime droplet coming off the ceiling. And so this is the final frame. This is where we want it to stop. So we don't want it to loop. And so I've set up a little slime dripping from the ceiling particle emitter here. And so what's going on here is we've got seven frames of animation and in the particles material we're setting the initial, we're setting the speed here but we've unchecked loop so that when it reaches the drop it stays there. But we've also added an acceleration curve and so this curve stays flat for the first part of the lifetime so that the drop at the top doesn't move while it's there. Then the speed ramps up from there so that it starts falling. And that's what gives us the falling effect. And just a couple other examples to give you some ideas. Here's a little one where whenever we drop the bombs, they explode upon hitting. So these are rigid body 2Ds that delete themselves when they contact an object, but they send out a signal to the scene, to the parent scene, so that it will spawn 
a particle emitter. Now a couple of limitations that particle emitters have. One of them is, so for the explosion you probably want to be, uh, you probably want to have it on one shot so that the explosion goes and then is done. But the problem is that it, when an explosion is, or sorry, when an uh, emitter is set to one shot, when it finishes, so see if I start it, if I set it to one shot and let's set it to emitting, right? It, it finishes the emitting, the explosion's done, the emitting ver uh, property is still true. So there's no way for us to tell in our code that this particle emission has actually finished. So what we had to do was just create a little timer and delete the particle emitter after enough time has gone by. Now there's an open issue for this on GitHub, so hopefully uh, that gets resolved one way or another, either with a emission complete signal or the emission property getting set back to false so you can check for that and you know we'll see how that goes but in the meantime if you're doing something like this and you need to get rid of your particle emitter after it's finished uh, use a timer and queue free it when that timer finishes another example is your classic space warp particle emitter where you have the particles coming out from the center of the screen like you're going into hyperspace which can be a lot of fun to play around with and make all sorts of different uh, color effects and glow effects and things like that uh, to give you that impression. Number of particles can make a huge difference here. The key here to getting this effect is taking our texture, which is kind of an, a glow, an oval glow shape, and in the material, setting the align Y property, because if we don't set that, then the texture is oriented the same way, just up and down. But by checking align Y, it will align the Y axis of the particle with, or the texture I should say, with the particle's direction. And that will give you that much better streaming effect. Particles can really add atmosphere. For example, if I turn on the rain here, we get one effect. Or if I turn it off and turn on this other one, which I called upside down, where we have all these little floaty particles, that must mean something's not right and you want to be careful. So I hope that gives you ideas for things you can try and make on your own. When it comes to particles, the fun really is in tinkering and trying different things. Whenever you find something really cool, save it somewhere, because you never know when you'll need that effect in a game. I'll post a link to this project below so you can download and play with it yourself. Make sure you have Godot 3.0 Beta 1 or later. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.